Hi everyone, it's Tiny Aggie Crafts here with a haul video. I haven't done one of these in a while. Um, last two places I went shopping at were the San Diego Vintage Flea Market and uh, yesterday I was actually up in Los Angeles in the fabric district buying fabric and buying millinery supplies. So let's get started. Alrighty, first up from San Diego Vintage Flea Market. I got this book, How to Make Clothes That Fit and Flatter by Adele P. Margolis. It's a nice 60s book, I wanna say. Let me check, actually, when the... Yeah, copyright 1969. But it's a nice 60s book on how to make clothing to fit you properly and flatter your body a lot better. And I was surprised that the dust jacket was still on it. Otherwise, I probably would have passed it right up. Next up, I got two patterns. One of them was uh, for 90s and robes, which I thought was very nice. And then another one I picked up because it reminded me of my friend who loves gunny sack dresses and 70s things. Hi, Janie. I thought they were so cute, so who knows? She might get something in the mail for Christmas. No promises, just wishful thinking. You know how it goes. I also got fabric. I got this sort of corduroy-esque velvety knit fabric that I'm gonna make a sweater jacket thingy out of very soft. I need to find good lining fabric for it, but I love it to bits and pieces. Next is some polyester. I want to say it's a gabardine fabric, but it's in this nice deep hunter green. And I don't know, I might make a little bolero or something out of it or a skirt. I'll see when the time comes. And the items I got from the San Diego, I mean, oh gosh, I already went to the San Diego Vintage Flea Market. Blah, 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 blah. Now the items that I got from Los Angeles. First stop, I went to Michael Levine, which if you've ever been to LA, you're pretty sure that you know who Michael Levine fabrics are. They're a huge fabric store. Their website's called lowcostfabrics.com. I'll put a link in the description down below. But um, they have a bunch of fabrics. If you have some thing of an idea of what you want, but you don't have a time to dig through the endless supply of little mini fabric stores that are all up and down the fabric district. I went in there for four fabrics, but one of them was a little bit cost prohibitive, so I decided against it. First thing I got was a gingham. And it's a polyester gingham, but I'm gonna make a friend a shirt with it. Which friend? We'll find out. Next was this gorgeous chambray with dots. It's black. I love it. I can't wait to make a blouse out of it or a dress, I don't know. I'm still thinking about it, but I love it. It's so soft and so lovely. What if I just made pillows out of it? Can I make pillows out of it? I'm not gonna make pillows out of it, don't worry. And finally, I got this polyester charmeuse in the color banana. And this is just so silky soft. I had to double check that I didn't accidentally get silk charmeuse. That's how soft it is. But it's a synthetic. I'll live. But I'm probably going to make um, some tap pants with it. A couple pairs of tap pants maybe. Just to have. Because tap pants are fun. Especially in the summer when it's prohibitively hot. Also picked up some covered buttons. 
for the shirt. And then I wanted to go to two other stores. I was only able to get to one. I went to the uh, San Diego, I mean, God, what is with me in San Diego? <laughs> the California Millinery Supply Place, which if you have any love of hat making, that place is like your new favorite place to be. It's this tiny little hole in the wall, and I'm saying that with love, because it is chocked full of treasures. There's hat frames, there's buckram, there's wire, there's veiling, there are flowers. Anything you can think of to help you make a hat, it's in there. I don't think they have hat blocks, like the heads, but I didn't see them. I was too, I was too hyper-focused on the frames and the ribbon and just every other pretty shiny thing that I can, I can see. First thing that I saw was some ribbon for this hat that I'm making. I picked up some grain ribbon, which uh, I think she said was from the 20s, stock from the 20s, and it had, and it was lined with uh, like acid-free paper around it in the loop. So it's been saved from years and years of dust and other nasty things. And then I got silk velvet ribbon. which is the softest thing ever. I love it to bits and pieces. I want more. I should have got more. She said this dated back from the 30s. I can't wait to trim my hat with it. I'm really excited. I also picked up some um, fascinator blanks. So a teardrop hat blank, which would go like this. Or like this, depending on however you want it. Honestly, the only limit is your imagination. I got some round hat blanks. Make like a little cocktail fascinator to go with it. And my favorite purchase from there is this cute little top hat. It's so precious. I, I just want to make like 18th century dresses and make little hats to go with them because they're so, this is so cute. I mean, look at this. Look at it. It's so dainty. I love it. And well, that's my haul, pretty much. <laughs> Nothing too crazy or spectacular, just some, just a few fabric staples to go into my stash and some stuff to make hats with. Oh, I also purchased a hat block from Judith M. Millinery Supplies, which I'll put the link down below for. And I already, like within an hour of receiving it, I covered her in tin foil and started to make a hat with her. I named her after my great-grandmother, Alberta, to which my grandmother was uh, very pleased by because her mother was never seen without a hat uh, or some kind of head covering. She was, she was a very loving woman who loved to sew and care for her family. So I figured someone like that deserves to give the name to an awesome hat block. That made more sense in my head. I swear it did. <laughs> but um, I'll be showing you that progress on the hat as soon as I finish it up. I'm currently stitching um, the crinoline around it, which is this. It's just a bias cut of like a tool type fabric that goes around the hat to protect the buckram and the wire from poking through the hat. But I'm currently sewing that around the actual hat piece and then the brim, I'll be sewing it on the brim fairly soon. 
but um, I think in my next video I'll show you a few behind the scenes of what the hat was, where I got the inspiration from, the hat that I previously made, and so on and so forth. If that's interesting to you, please let me know in the comments down below. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching, you guys. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Bye.